Very basically, elasticity measures how sensitive consumers are to changes in prices. In other words, we already learned from one of the previous chapters in demand and supply, in order to get people to buy more, a seller has to lower his or her price to sell a particular good. But at what point do I lower my price where the change, the percentage change in price is greater than the percentage change in quantity. In other words, I'm lowering my price this much, but you're only buying this much more. Or, on the other hand, if I lower my price this much and you buy this much more, how sensitive you are to, to that. So therefore, the idea of elasticity measures how sensitive someone is to a change in price. If, in fact, the percentage change in quantity is greater than the percentage change in price, visually, if you think the change in quantity is this much, where the, I changed my price this much, I lowered my price this tiny bit, but you bought this much more, then we say that you are sensitive and your demand is elastic, your demand stretched, if you think of, or your quantity demand stretched, if you think of a rubber band. On the other hand, if I lower my price on a percentage basis this much and you only buy this much more, then we say that you're not sensitive to that change in price or that you are inelastic. You really didn't care how low the price was. I wasn't going to buy any more of it. Now, there's two ways that we can measure how elastic a particular good is to a change in price. One way is through the use of the midpoint formula. Now, the midpoint formula tells us that the change in quantity, we're going to take the change in quantity divided by the sum of the quantities divided by 2. Then we're going to divide all of that by the change in percentage change in price divided by the sum of the prices divided by 2. And if we, in fact, have this scenario that we have up here where uh, we have a particular good that's $8 and we're going to, we're going to sell 1,000 units, but when we lower our price to $7, to $7, we actually end up selling 2,000 tickets or an additional 1,000. So what we want to do is we want to find out exactly if in this particular range our price change was elastic or not elastic. If it is elastic, the resulting number of this formula will be greater than 1. If it's inelastic, if you weren't sensitive, the resulting number, the elasticity of co uh, demand, uh, coefficient of demand will be less than 1. So if we take this, we're going to take the change in quantity, 1 point. We take the absolute value, so we ignore negative numbers. So therefore, what we're going to do is we're going to change, take the change in our quantity. In this, we're going to take our new quantity minus our old, old quantity, which is 2 minus 1, which is 1. And we're going to divide that by the addition of these two numbers. 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. And we're going to divide that by 2. This is called the midpoint formula. We're going to divide all of this by my change in price. My new price is 7 minus my old price is 8. Ordinarily, that would give me a negative 1. However, we are ignoring negative numbers because it is absolute value. So therefore, this is going to be 1 divided by the sum of our prices, which is 7 plus 8, which is 15. We're going to divide that by 2. So this is going to give me 1 divided by 1.5 divided by 1 divided by 7.5. And if we divide those, we will get um, 0.66 divided by 0.13. This particular number approximates the elasticity demand of coefficient E sub D approximates 5. And therefore, we say that the, the demand for this particular product in this price range is elastic. I lowered my price 
you increased your purchase of that particular product by 66%. So I lowered the price this much, you bought this much more. So therefore, the demand for that particular product is elastic. Um, now, if we want to take another example of this, I'm just going to take a few seconds to erase this. And let's take a look at between price, lowering the price from $4 to $3. Well, the change in quantity went up by one. My new, uh, my new quantity demanded versus my old quantity demanded is one divided by the addition of these two numbers, the, chain, the sum of my quantities, which is 11, divided by 2. We're going to divide that by the change in my price, 3 minus 4, again, absolute value, which is equal to 1 divided by the addition of my prices, 7 um, divided by 2, which is equal to 1 divided by 5.5, divided by 1 divided by 3.5. And this particular calculation gives us 0.18 divided by 0.28, or my elasticity demand of coefficient, or E sub D, is equal to 0.64. Since this number is less than 1, we say that your demand for this particular product in this price range is, is inelastic. You didn't care. In other words, you lowered your price 28%, but I only bought 18% more goods. You lowered your price from $100 uh, to $77, 28%. And I only bought, from 100, I only bought 118 more. Uh, I only bought 18 more, excuse me. So you lowered your price this little bit, this amount, this great amount, but I only bit, uh, bought that much more. Therefore, we call this uh, inelastic, where you are not sensitive to a change in price. Another way we can tell if a particular product is elastic or inelastic is through the use of what we call the total revenue test. In order for us to calculate the total revenue that a firm brings in, we simply calculate the price, uh, of, the, price of the good times the, the number of goods sold. So if we have 10 shirts for sale at $25 a shirt, the, the company's total revenue at that particular point would be $250. So this is just another test to find out if a product is elastic or inelastic. There's two arguments to this if you want to think of it that way. The first one says, if a change in price, if I, if I change my price and that change results in an increase in total revenue, then the demand, the elasticity of demand for that particular good is elastic. In other words, that you are sensitive. So therefore, if I lower my price and the resulting total revenue is greater than, than its previous uh, uh, price, the, the product at that particular point is elastic. If, on the other hand, a change in price results in a decrease in total revenue, then my demand is inelastic. The elasticity of demand is inelastic. In other words, you weren't sensitive. And if we take the same numbers that we worked with when we did the midpoint formula, at a price of $8, I sold 1,000 tickets, and therefore my total revenue was $8,000. Now I decide that I'm going to lower my price to $7 a ticket. I realize that I then sell a total of 2,000 tickets or I sell an additional 1,000. Price times quantity gives me $14,000 in total revenue. In this particular case, my total revenue went up and therefore the elasticity demand of coefficient, uh, coefficient of demand is, is higher, and therefore we say that it is elastic. And if you can remember from the midpoint calculation, that was equal to 5. Again, verifying that uh, it's elasticity. However, on the other hand, if I lower my price from $4 to $3, I realize again that my quantity demanded went up from five to 6,000 uh, tickets, or again, a change of one. However, my total revenue is four times five, which is 20,000 at that range. But when I lowered it 
my price to $3, my quantity demanded only went up to six, and therefore my total revenue was decreased. And therefore, at this particular point, the elasticity coefficient of demand in this particular range is inelastic. Or if you can think of what it was before, the calculation was 0.64 or somewhere around there. And in this particular situation, we say that you are not sensitive to changes.